nobody really thinks a house fire is going to happen to them. So when you think that's never going to happen, you don't prepare. But a house fire can happen to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Hi, I'm Steve Kerber, director of UL's Fire Safety Research Institute. We're dedicated to advancing fire safety. Let's go inside and find out what puts your home and family at risk and how to take action now so you're prepared in the event of a fire. First, here's some fire science. There are three components needed to start and sustain a fire. Heat, fuel, and oxygen. The fire triangle. This beautiful open floor plan maximizes the look and feel of your home, but it also provides plenty of free flowing oxygen and there are no walls to act as a fire barrier. The plastics and other synthetic materials used in most modern furniture produce more toxic smoke than natural materials and spread fire easily and faster than ever. People think they have more time to escape a fire in their home than they do. You actually have three minutes or less, less than three minutes to get out. So what can you do? Preparation can make all the difference. The number one necessity you need to protect your home and family? Working smoke alarms. Three out of five home fire deaths occur when there are no working smoke alarms. Install them inside and outside sleeping rooms and on every level of your home, including the basement. Do it yourself or ask a friend or family member for help. We all hate those nuisance alarms going off in the kitchen every time you burn some toast or fry something. It's the number one reason why you disable your smoke alarms, right? Newer technology is coming that will make smoke alarms better able to distinguish between smoke from cooking and smoke from a real potentially life-threatening fire. But meanwhile, don't take any chances. Make sure they're connected and working. Well, that's one way to smoke a salmon, Billy. As one of Billy's smoke alarms, we go way back. I used to beep, beep, beep at Billy when he cooked dinner in the past. I can now better distinguish between smoke from a fire and smoke from Billy's dreams of becoming the next Iron Chef. There, there, Billy. Make sure you have working smoke alarms in your home. Okay, you've got smoke alarms installed. What other preparations can you make? Data shows that 50% of home fire deaths happen between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. So let's head upstairs and see what we can do to stay safe while you're sleeping. People may think it's safer to sleep with the door open. It's not. Our research proves that a closed door becomes a physical barrier between you and the fire, smoke, and toxic gases. A closed door can hold back heat. In our experiments, an open door room reached temperatures close to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, while a closed door room stayed under 100 degrees. And a closed door cuts off the fire's oxygen supply and slows the spread. If you can't get out quickly, having a closed door between you and the fire is critical to your survival. So remember, close before you doze. Think about this scenario. It's 3 a.m., your smoke alarm goes off. You have less than three minutes to get out safely. You ask yourself, where's the fire? Where are the kids, the dog? What do I do? It's overwhelming. There's no way you can formulate a plan in the moment of crisis. You need to have an escape plan prepared. Draw a map of your home. Show all doors and windows. For each room, find two ways out. You need to know your escape route by heart and practice it. Then, in an emergency, you put your plan into action. If you can get out safely, get out. Pick a meeting place outside that everyone knows. If you can't get out, remember, get behind a closed door and call 911 for help. The best way to protect your home and family? Make fire safety your responsibility and priority. For resources you can use, go to closeyourdoor.org. 